that's only three hours. What Peter and the psalmist are declaring is that God can arbitrarily compress time in our frame or expand time. He can go either way, as much or as little as he wants. Which is one of the texts I use to show that God, at a minimum, is operating in geometric time, not linear time. That's the only way those passages could be true. It also explains why the Bible says God has not got any beginning or ending and is not created. That's impossible for a being constrained in linear time, but God is not so uh, constrained. Uh, but the four literal definitions for a day are part of the daylight hours, three or four hours, or even one hour, all the daylight hours, like 12 hours, 24 hours, one rotation period, or a long but finite period of time. Yom cannot be used for indefinite time. There's another Hebrew word that you can use for indefinite time. It's the word Ola, usually translated once upon a time or a long time ago. But Yom can only be used for a finite period of time. But that's exactly what you need in the six creation days. Six consecutive finite periods of time. So I met with you at the um, Lascatus Christian last yeah, time. I remember. Yeah. And then I had a question, most important question I had, and I forgot to ask it to you. And nobody else will be able to answer it. So I'm getting into astronomy, and it just occurred to me that if we see a star that's, say, 10 million miles or 10 million light years away, with the naked eye, we see it as 10 million years ago. Right. Does a telescope bring you back in time as well as bring you closer? Yes. Meaning that if you meet it halfway, then you're seeing it five million years ago. That's right. So then is it theoretically possible that as we're looking at stars, but we're also focusing a telescope, it might not appear in the telescope, but it will appear to our naked eye? Well, some have suggested that the light doesn't come from the stars, it actually comes from a place like halfway in between. Okay. But we can disprove that. Right. Because as a beam of light travels through space, it passes through gas clouds and dust. Mm -hmm. And those gas clouds and dust will alter the spectral lines. Okay. And so the spectral lines tell us that the light actually leaves the stars and galaxies, which means that we really are looking at 10 million years of light travel time. But are we actually meeting something halfway with the telescope at all, or? No. So we're, act we're seeing it the same as with the naked eye? Yes. Exactly. Interesting. It just made more sense that as it's getting closer, you know, because that, as space goes, as I walk up to you, well, all the telescope does is allow you to see fainter objects. Okay. And has no impact on the light travel time. Okay, and then the other question was, um, I was trying to understand kind of how you were talking about the Big Bang. And I do actually agree with your theories, but then I thought of later, what if the whole Big Bang was just another implosion of, say, a larger uh, black hole? of another universe which is so far bigger that the stars there are as big as our known universe. Is that a possibility? Or? Well, there are physicists that are speculating that there may be dimensions beyond length, width, height, and time right. that are large. And in those dimensions you might have other universes. And, uh, but what general relativity tells us that God made two universes, once uh -huh. you've got observers in universe A, the space-time envelope of that universe cannot possibly overlap the space-time envelope of any other possibly existing universe. Okay. Which means if God made 10,000 universes, we'll never know. Right. We only well, know the one in which we live. But so, uh, what I'm thinking is, what if we're part of a bigger one? In other words, well, the, what we call the universe really isn't okay. a universe, it's just it's a speck of dust. It's to say we're part. There could be something else, but it's disjoint from us. Okay. So we're not connected to anything else that could possibly exist. And from a Christian perspective, we know that there are other realms beyond our universe. Right. The angels live in a separate realm with different physics than what we experience. But of course, in the old days, they, people generally saw it as up there. There was well, something up there, physically up there. Well, that's understandable. Right. Because, you know... If you're talking about two-dimensional beings living in a front right. world, and you say, well, where are you? We'd say, well, we're up. Hmm. Now, up for them would be this, right. but up for us is this. 
Likewise, when God says that heaven is up and hell is down, he doesn't mean length, width, and height. Right. He means they're in a different dimension. So we're just looking at it as slices as opposed to... Yeah, we're looking at this when in fact there's reality above and below. Okay, so that makes more sense. Yeah. Cool. Thanks.